Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint this birdhouse. So it's a gray rustic style birdhouse, a little chickadee on the top, some blue bonnets and branches, a lot of things going on in this painting. So I'm going to guide you through this step by step. And the first thing we're going to do so I'm working on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply the background. So the background of this painting was done using a uh, round mop brush. This is actually a makeup brush. I use this ever so often to do backgrounds mostly and it provides kind of a smooth blended background something different if you don't have this brush don't want to get this brush or don't want to do this style background you can do a similar technique with like a flat brush like the three quarter inch flat brush so we're going to start by loading our palette with cerulean blue and titanium white so those are the two colors we're going to blend together to create our background and I went ahead and loaded the brush in the water and because this brush has so many bristles, it holds a lot of water. So I squeezed most of that water out. That little bit of water is going to help with the blending so you don't have to apply too much paint on your uh, brush. And so I double loaded it in white. So we need a higher proportion of white than blue for this to get our light blue. If I used more blue than white, it would be too dark so we want a lighter color background but we also want a variety so I'm basically just swirling the paint around letting it blend um, a general a generous amount of pressure on the brush you can do kind of small circular strokes and we want kind of a variety of the blue and the white mostly we want to keep it light but we can have some patches that are dark and some patches that are lighter the idea is to kind of make like an abstract blended background uh, we want to try not to over blend so if I keep working the colors and keep swirling my brush around it may just end up being a solid blue a way to simplify this is just to paint the background a light blue color and that's something that you can do if you don't like this technique um, but i like to do different varieties in my background have fun blending colors and it creates a lot of um, interest in the background versus if it was just a solid color i'm just going to fill this up When you're done with the background, you need to let it dry. It shouldn't take too long to dry because it's a relatively thin layer of paint. So you can take a break and come back or use a hair dryer to dry it. And then we're gonna be drawing our birdhouse. So this birdhouse plan is, I have a copy of this attached to the written directions of this tutorial linked with this video. Um, but this is basically my sketch of the birdhouse and I have the measurements for it. If you like the measurements, those are there for you. If you don't want to use the measurements and you just want to draw the birdhouse out by hand, that is perfectly acceptable. So I kind of do both ways depending on what your style is. And so I'm going to kind of place this painting to the left of it to kind of help show you where we're going with this. But we're going to start by drawing the, the vertical um, post part of the birdhouse and again I'm gonna give you precise measurements you do not have to follow these exact measurements so I'm going to measure this piece right here and it's about four and a half inches from the right side of the canvas so the birdhouse is not centered it's slightly positioned more to the right 
and the height of our post is maybe one and three quarter inches high. You can do one and a half if you want to kind of round down, but I'm going to kind of mark on my ruler where that is about 1.75 inches. And then I'm going to measure that. I'll place a little mark at where that 1.75 inch mark is and the width of our post is about one inches. So one inches to the left of that first mark on the bottom. And so we have enough to do our shape. It's a rectangular shape. So I highly recommend that you use a T-square ruler. It will help you line up to the side of your canvas to get your lines to be perpendicular and parallel. So I did that. And then our bottom piece is five and a half inches wide. So you can find the center of that and then take your five and a half. So it's about 2.75 for the center point of 5.5. And then go ahead and do your horizontal line. Um, the reason why I'm not using my T-square for that is because there's so much paint on my T-square now I cannot see the, the numbers anymore. So that's why I'm switching between my ruler and T-square. Okay, so the next measurement we have is 8 inches and that is from the bottom of that horizontal part to the peak of the roof. So that top point of that triangle goes eight inches. So I took my ruler and I made a little mark. So that dot is how high our birdhouse is going to be. So we have that measurement and we can go ahead and do our vertical pieces next. So I'm gonna take this and our vertical pieces are about five inches. So I'm gonna go five inches on both sides of that. So that is how high the sides of our birdhouse are. I'm going to take my T-square and make sure that's lined up to the side of the canvas and I'll do those two vertical lines. And then, so this part is a little bit tricky because of the slope of the, the roof here. Um, we have the top point, so sometimes it's easier. You can you can do this with the ruler to kind of get that. The width of our roof is about three quarter inches, but it might be kind of tricky to get that. So I'm just gonna do my ruler to kind of sketch my roof out first, and then I can adjust it in just a little bit. We want um, to do like a vertical line where that peak is so we know that both sides of the roof need to meet that part and but the width of our roof is kind of tricky because we want to get that to be kind of even so that piece is about three quarter inches wide so i can take that and do the side line and then take the ruler and draw that so take the ruler, it's about three quarter inches wide, make a little mark and then draw that. And then we have our straight line. And then this can always be adjusted a little bit as we're painting it in. Um, it is a rustic old wood style birdhouse, so it does not have to be perfect. Uh, but this is a good amount of shape so where we can start painting it in. So I am gonna go ahead and load my palette with Mars Black and Titanium White. Those are the two colors I use to create this gray sort of faux wood style in this birdhouse. And I'm using two brushes, the three quarter flat and then a smaller flat brush to get into some of the smaller areas. So you wanna go ahead and load your brush in white and a little bit of black. So you need more white than black to make this gray. And you're simply going to paint all up and down strokes to fill in the shape of your birdhouse, letting that white and black gently blend but the key here is to not over blend it. We want to create that wood look. So we want to use that black to create the grain in the wood. So it's gently blending with our whites. Um, it would be helpful 
if you want to take painter's tape or masking tape and mask out your birdhouse. I did not do that because I didn't have any masking tape left. So I'm going to just freehand this. What is also helpful is you can take your T-square and you don't have to use tape for this, but you can use your T-square and you can see how I ended up with so much paint on my T-square. You can line it up and use that as a way to mask off your birdhouse. So you can get that crisp line on the left and the right and then on the bottom as well. So you can use that to help you not get the gray on the sky area. So I'm just gonna keep filling this in. And we're gonna do multiple layers. So. If you, um, you'll kind of see what happens as we go along. So we're just going to do the black and the white mixture, but then we're going to add some more layers on it to create the color, uh, the wood that we want. But right now we're kind of just focusing on filling in our shape. I'm going to use my T-square to line it up horizontally and I will uh, use that to allow me to do the bottom piece. So the bottom piece is nice and straight and I'm just dragging my brush up. Again, the key, the um, trick is to not over blend the paint and also to make sure that you're using mostly white and just a little bit of black. So I'm just going to fill this whole area up. I'm going to go silent here for a little bit while I'm filling this up and I will give you further instruction as that comes along. So when you get to the roof part, you it might be tricky to not paint over our diagonal line. So I am painting over it and that is okay. That'll get you your vertical strokes up to your diagonal part of the roof. And also I added a little bit more dark color towards the top. So loading my brush in a little bit more black up there. I'm still grabbing the white because I don't want it to turn black, but a little extra pop of black up there gives it kind of like a shadowy look because our roof might be casting a shadow in that area so it would be darker. If you feel like you need to load your brush in water because it's not spreading as much anymore, feel free to do that. Just try not to add too much water to this. And so you can see I'm making that top part darker. I'm still blending it with the rest of the gray. And I'm going, my paint strokes are going over my um, angled part of the roof. And that's okay because we will go back over the those rectangular roof shapes and paint over anything we painted over where it shouldn't be painted over. What I'm doing now is I'm choosing to go back over my birdhouse and layer on some more white. So I'm just loading a very small amount of white on the tip of the brush and just gently dragging it in a vertical direction to give it some dry brush effect with that white. And then I'm going to blend a little bit more black for shadow at the top and blend that down into 
the house, the rest of the house. And then we're going to start filling our roof in. And so that is a lighter color so that it stands out from the rest. I'm gonna start with the three quarter flat and the white. So I didn't rinse my brush at all. There's still like a little bit of black on there so it's turning gray. But we wanna use a lot of white for this so that it will stand out against that dark shadowy upper part of the house. So I'm just using the tip of the brush to pretty much cut in on that shape just kind of gently gliding that to define that shape. If you wanted to use ruler or paint tape in this step, you can. And I'm going to switch to this brush. This is also a flat brush, but it's called a 12 bright, so it's a smaller flat brush. And that is useful for this because it's a smaller area to fill in, so I don't have the big brush that's gonna um, be a little bit harder to control. So this brush, same technique with the white and a little bit of black to make it kind of a light gray. I'm going in a diagonal direction this time and just filling in both of those shapes. Next, I'm gonna grab a little bit of black on the brush. I'm going to gently blend in some black lines in there, but I'm not gonna over blend this. This is going to give that white part more of that full wood look. And you can see I just did lines, but I didn't over blend it. Just a few little lines that black blends very gently into the white, but overall that roof is lighter than the rest of our house so that it stands out. And then we can paint our post in. So the post is darker than the rest of the house. So I used mostly black for that. And I'm using my T-square ruler to define that vertical shape. So I use that on both sides. Again, this is black with a little bit of white. It just needs to be darker than the house so that that part stands out. And then I decided to go in Add a little bit of white in there to kind of lighten that up, but overall that should be fairly dark compared to the rest of the house. On the bottom edge of the house, I dragged some black very gently up, and this is kind of a dry brush style, meaning you can wipe off some of the paint off your brush to make sure there's not a lot of paint on the brush, but very gently dragging that black just on the bottom edge and just dragging it upwards kind of gives that a dark shadowy dark wood effect just at the bottom makes it look more weathered next we're going to rinse both our brushes off and set them to the side and we are going to do the circles so the openings of our birdhouse this birdhouse has two circular openings and in order to do the circles, we need to make sure that this is dry. It should dry fairly fast. If it's not, you can come back, take a break, get a blow dryer and dry it. But the circles, I used uh, the bottom or the cap of the, the acrylic paint tube. So the Liquitex Basics paint that I use, the cap is a circle and that's the size circle I used. And if you don't have those, you can find a similar size circle. It's about one and a half inches in diameter and you can trace a circle or use a compass. So you're just gonna take that. The circle starts at about an inch from the bottom. So you could estimate that or measure it if you want precise measurements, but just kind of place your circle in the center about an inch above the bottom and you can take your pencil and trace that circle. And then our next circle is about a half inch, three quarter inch above the first circle. So place it in the center 
and trace your second circle. I'm making this darker so that you can see the circle a little bit better on the camera. But we're going to go ahead and paint those circles in black. So I'm using a number four round brush and the Mars black color. So just a solid black. And you just take the round brush and fill your circle in. I find it easiest to start in the center of the circle and then slowly work my way out to the circumference, the edge of the circle. So just be very careful right there. Circles can be frustrating. Um, if your circle isn't perfect, that's okay. Just keep in mind it's an old weathered birdhouse. So if our circle is kind of wobbly, um, that's okay. We also will do a few things to kind of add to these circles. We'll, we're gonna paint kind of a 3D inner part of it. And we're also gonna have some nest material kind of hanging out of it. So there's a couple ways you can disguise your circle if it didn't come out perfect. It does not have to be perfect. So just painting both of those in, taking our time. I find this black is easier to work with if you add just a teeny bit of water to it. It helps it flow. You don't want to add too much water to it because then you don't want your paint to be dripping down. And next, while we have our round brush and black still in our hand, I twist it on my palette a little bit. That gets that paint to be distributed right there on the tip. That helps us paint fine lines. But I wanna gently outline the bottom edge of the birdhouse, so that's what I'm doing there. I'm not gonna outline everything on this birdhouse. Just I'm going to loosely outline a few things that seem like they need to pop a bit. So twisting the brush gets that paint right there on the tip. You can also do this with a paint pen, um, like a black Posca paint pen. You get good control with that because these are very fine lines. I outlined the edge of the roof and the bottom edge. I'm not gonna outline the top edge, so just the bottom part of the roof. Twisting the brush. When I go to reload, because I know I'm going to paint a very thin line, so I'm using just the tip of the brush, outline the bottom edge, and then this edge right here. So our roof also has some wood texture in it and some vertical uh, division lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those details next. Starting at the top where the roof is, I'm gonna again load that paint right there on the tip because these are also fine lines. So we already kind of did this when we painted it in, but I'm gonna kind of just do some more on purpose full wood lines. So I did like a knot, like a little um, elliptical shape for a knot and then some more lines that go in the direction of the wood grain. This gives it more of a wood look. You can skip this step if you don't want to do that much detail right there. And then the panels are also optional that we don't have to do. I'm gonna erase that little bit of pencil right there at the top. Um, so for the panels, I used a ruler and they're spaced about two fingers apart so you can kind of like take your fingers and space them apart or you can estimate again we don't need perfection here because it's a weathered looking birdhouse so I'm just gonna take my t-square line it up to the bottom and again I'm still using the four round and loading just a small amount of black paint on the tip of the brush and did my first little uh, panel and I'm going to use my fingers so two fingers spread for the spacing of that and so when I'm doing these lines I'm very loosely the line is not continuous in fact I kind of lift up my brush a little bit so it's not like a continu continuous line it's um, 
or like the first one I did was more like a dashed line. This one was a little bit more solid, but the point is that we don't, we don't need it to be thick. It needs to be very thin and loose. So this line will go over our circles and that's okay. But same thing, just very loosely painting that line. And I'm just gonna keep doing this across. And I'm wiping my ruler off each time I move it because if there's paint on the ruler, I don't want that paint to rub off on the canvas when I do my next panel. So every time I'm moving the ruler to paint my next line, I'm making sure I'm wiping off the ruler with the towel. And teeny bit of water in the brush right there that, that will get that paint to flow. And then there's my next panel. And I have room for a few more. And it's okay if each of them are not all perfectly spaced apart. In fact, when I get to my far edge over here, this one is not going to be evenly spaced. I can leave it like that, but I'm going to put one more vertical piece right there on the edge. Next, I'm going to make the decision to add a few more dry brush white paint marks on my birdhouse. Um, this time, I'm using the bright brush and wiping off the paint because I really only want very, very dry strokes here. Giving it more of a weathered look with that white. Again, dragging it in a vertical direction. Trying not to go over my circles or any of my panel lines I made, but doing some more of that white. It kind of brightens it up too, it was a little bit too dark. Next, we're going to do the kind of the 3D inner openings of our holes. If you look at the final version of it, you can see kind of the side of the holes where the holes are drilled open. And I did that with a round brush and gray. So mix gray on your palette with white and black. Load only a small amount on the tip of the brush. And it's almost like we're gonna be painting a crescent moon on the inside of the circle. So it starts out thin on the edge. It gets a little bit thicker and then it gets thin again. And this is only on one side of the circle. So we're only doing this on the inner part of half of the circle. So we start out thin, we press a little bit harder on the bristles to make that line thicker, and then it gets thin again. If you mess up, you can always get black and kind of um, touch it up on the center part of it so you can get your black. This one got kind of messy right here, so I just took the black and kind of outlined that circle again to refine, redefine the circle. I did it to the top one as well. Just kind of made that inner part a little bit darker. And we'll do the nest material in a later step. We are gonna go ahead and do our chickadee next. So what I did was I just looked up pictures of chickadees and found one in a position that I wanted to draw it in and I drew the chickadee. So he's perched on the top of the roof, the very point of it. And I'm gonna use a pencil to draw this. So there is a traceable for this tutorial if you are struggling with the drawing, but I am going to show you step-by-step step how I drew my chickadee bird. So if we break our bird down into simple shapes, we have a circle for the head. So a little bit above our roof, or probably about an inch to an inch and a half from above the peak point of the roof. I did a circle for the head. And then I did a curved line going down for his body straight diagonal line going down from the left part of his head and it kind of curves down for the wings so kind of like a semi-circle shape for the wing 
and then our tail goes down diagonally comes back over it meets the bottom left part of the body our feet two little angled lines that are going down to touch the top part of the roof and i'm just going to go over these lines a little bit darker to define our shape a little beak so you can have the beak i made my this one the beak kind of angled upwards a little bit but we can change the angle of it depending on which way you want the bird to be looking you want them to be looking more horizontal you can put the beak that way or kind of downwards if you want it to be looking kind of downwards i'm just going back over my shape and just kind of going darker to define my pieces so chickadees have um, different colors the, the black and the white division so i did a little of the eye and i'm also going to draw erase that bottom part of the head but i'm also going to draw my division line where my black and white are kind of going to be when i paint this in so that top part kind of masks the top part of his head so that where that's going to be black and then the bottom right part under the beak is black as well we're going to go ahead and paint our chickadee in and he has some yellow in his feather colors so i loaded my palette with yellow oxide the other two colors i will use for the bird are black and white so titanium white mars black I am using the four round brush to load the black and white. So I'm going to do a gray. So I double loaded the brush, but didn't mix it all the way. I want a blended look of black and white. So I'm gonna start at the semicircle feather area and I'm doing short strokes using the black and the white. I started at the tip of the wing and I'm just painting that half circle shape in using short little strokes. Doing those short strokes will give it the feather texture and also not over blending it will give it that feather texture. Then I grabbed black on my brush that time and I'm just going to slowly start working my way up the head area. So this top part of the head is black. I'm only doing this very slowly, just gently, kind of like I'm sketch painting when I'm doing little short strokes. It almost reminds me of sketching it in because that creates the feather texture when you do your strokes that way. The bottom part under his beak is black. And then I'm going to do the tail. So the tail's a little bit darker than the wing. I added a bit more black right there but still introducing white in there because it's not solid black in a diagonal direction. A little, few little strokes of white in there, but not over blending it, adding a little bit more to my wing. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and start working the belly area. Again, short strokes. This one's going in a curved direction in the direction of that shape of his chest area. So I did curved strokes, still that sketchy kind of stroke. And down here. So I'm going to introduce the yellow oxide. So the bottom part is yellow oxide, still the same kind of stroke, short, sketchy type of strokes. And that yellow is going to blend up into our white. I took more white and kind of blended that down into the yellow. So that's gonna give your chickadee that golden yellow look on the bottom part of his body. And then this part of our head is white. So again, short strokes, but I'm going in kind of a circular direction for the side of his cheek, side of his head and kind of goes to almost a point on the right side. I mean, a few more white strokes in there. A few white strokes on his wing.
And I'm just continuing to layer on the color in the area. So I'm making sure that this top part stays black, but if I wanna add some a few little light gray feathered strokes in there, I can, making sure the side wing stays gray and just layering on some more feather textures. Just try not to over blend your colors. Little stroke of dark black in the tail. For the beak, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush off and pinch my brush so it comes to a point because this is a very tiny area. I wanna get the black right there on the tip of the brush. I can twist it to distribute that paint on the edge of the bristles. I'm just gonna do my little beak that's sticking out. That one is black. And go in here, define my head shape a little bit more brought that up closer to the original pencil line that I drew. And you don't always have to fill in your pencil drawing parts. You can erase pencil later if it's still showing through. And then for the eye, little tiny, actually not the eye, that the highlight on the top of the beak, I did a little bit of the white on the top part of his beak. And then his legs used black and just outlined those lines. Made this part a little bit darker. It didn't like that white that I added in there. So I went back over that and made that dark. And then I rinsed my brush off for the eye. So again, rinse it off, pinch the brush, load the tip of it in titanium white and do a little dot. It's even with the top part of the beak still in the black region of his head. Do a little white feather textures in there. And then this is gonna be hard to see on camera because it's such a tiny detail, but I didn't like how large that eye was. I was being a little bit of a perfectionist here. Um, and so I went back with black and I outlined the outer part of that white dot to make it smaller and also make his eye kind of not so bright and white. So that kind of made his eye smaller, but we still see that little white dot that indicates that he has his eye. I'm just going back over the top part of his head and his back a little bit. I think our bird is done. We are going to move along here and add all the fun little things around our birdhouse. So you can definitely customize this if you want. I'm gonna do the branches next. So the branches I did with burnt umber and I'm using a number eight round brush. So take your round brush and load it into the water. Kind of tap it dry, load it into the brown. I'm going to start my branches from the tip to the base. And you could do it the opposite way. Sometimes it's easier to go backwards. Sometimes it's easier to do this way. But um, making sure there's a little bit of water in that brown is going to ensure that it flows. So you're doing the smaller piece and then you press hard when you get to the edge so your branch is smaller at first and it gets larger towards the base. So I'm doing multiple branch pieces. This one branched off into three pieces. And again, it, if it's easier for you to start uh, thick at first you can and then get thin or you can do it the opposite way whichever way you feel most comfortable with so you're do your thin piece you kind of wiggle your brush up and it gets thicker when you get to the end so I'm just going to add a few more branches in here keep in mind that these branches are going to have leaves so just pay attention to the position of them we don't want to overcrowd our bird we worked so hard on that bird we don't have to want to accidentally have it be covered by leaves or branches. And then if you want to highlight your branches, you can take some of that yellow oxide color that we used in the bird and just gently blend that with the brown on the top parts of the branch. You can also take black and blend that on the bottom parts to make some of the branches have kind of a shadowy area, especially towards the bottom. So let's assume the sun is hitting the top part of the branches and the bottom parts are a little bit more dark and shadowy. 
again optional and then we're going to load our palette with Booker's Green Hue Permanent and we're going to do our leaves. So I'm going to do basic leaves. I'm not doing realistic leaves. And getting our round brush rinsed off. I'm going to grab the green on the tip of the brush. And I'm basically going to paint a leaf shape. So the shape is that kind of leaf. So a curvy kind of elliptical shape that goes to a point and I'm going to just paint leaves on the tips of my branches. If I want different colors in there I can grab white or even that yellow oxide and I can blend that in on one side of the leaf so that we have different colors in our leaf. We don't have all of them the same color. So maybe the light's hitting the leaf in different ways. It gives it some more interest versus if it was just one solid color. So I'm doing that by blending it on the canvas. So right there, I grabbed yellow oxide and painted just the top part of the leaf and let that yellow blend with the green. So I'm just painting these. They're all relatively the same size, although I'll probably do some smaller ones in this area because I don't want to overcrowd this bird. I don't want it to be too busy up in that area, so I'll do some smaller ones. This is a bundle of three, and then I'll do some little guys over here. A few more leaves up here and then I'm going to paint some branches to connect some of those extra leaves that I added in that area. I'm just going back with my round brush and adding a few little brown lines that connect to those leaves. Next we're going to add the nest texture that's kind of sticking out of our holes and I am just taking my round brush and using a combination of that yellow oxide, the burnt umber, the white so the yellow brown and white and if you want to use a little bit of black you can even use a little bit of black so i'm just loading my brush in those colors and just kind of letting those blend on the canvas painting like little curved strokes on the bottom of the circle to make it look like the little nest pieces are sticking out the bottom part of the holes and using white over it kind of highlights a, the texture a little bit, gives it some more dimension. Then I'm going to paint our flowers so we have blue bonnets red bonnets and some grass texture on the bottom area of our painting and i'm going to start with the blue ones and i'm using phthalo blue and titanium white and the number four round brush so we're going to be very simple about this so we're going to paint like a cluster of two to three little strokes for these flowers and i'm just Painting, I'm loading a generous amount of paint on the tip of my brush and I'm just stroking it downwards in kind of like a curved um, direction to make kind of a cup cluster of flowers and double loading it in white. So when that white and blue kind of blend, it creates a different variation. And as it goes up, the flowers get a little bit smaller at the top and a little bit lighter. So these flowers at the top are just one or two single strokes and lighter with more white. Then I'm going to rinse and dry and do the stems of these flowers. So I'm gonna load the tip of the brush in the hooker screen and I'm just gonna connect all of my flowers with little lines. So just very loose green line that connects all of your little flowers. 
And then we can do little leaves. So they're kind of elongated pointed leaves and we only see a few down here. So I'm just gonna repeat that technique for the red. I'm gonna rinse dry and I'm using Pyrol Red for this. You can use any blue and any red, by the way. I'm gonna start at the top. So same thing, keep it very simplified. You're just doing the single stroke, creating little cup clusters of flowers, working your way down in kind of a column using that white, blending the white with the red. So when it blends, you get a different variation of red. This one I made a little bit more clustered at the top. And down here I did some flowers ended up having four little strokes and that's okay. And going all the way down, leaving some space in between each of my little petal strokes for the green stem. And then I'll paint the green stem in between each of the flowers. And paint a few narrow elongated leaves on the bottom. So I'm basically going to repeat this technique. I'm going to make another bundle of blue bonnets down here. This one is not gonna go as high because it's not going to overlap our birdhouse. It's just gonna go to the height just under the birdhouse. So same thing, little strokes with the blue and the white. Rinse and do your stem and leaves. I did a few strokes in this bottom area to make grass. So I just took the green and just did like little angled marks with the brush, just very lightly, just kind of dragged the brush up from the bottom to create little grass texture lines. And we can keep going with this. I am going to add some blue and red flowers on the right lower part of the birdhouse. You can add different flowers if you want. I thought about adding a sunflower in the upper left part of the painting where it's kind of blank, but I decided to keep it a little bit simple, but if you wanted to add other kinds of flowers, you are welcome to do that. So I'm doing the same technique over here with the blue bonnets, and then I'll do stem and leaf, and then I'll do the red ones, another set of red ones to the right of that. The final thing we're going to do is add the decorative star on our birdhouse, which is also an optional thing. So to do that, I used a pencil, preferably a white chalk pencil so it will show up against the dark part. So I drew a star with the white chalk pencil. So I just did like a basic star drawing like the triangle kind of star and not lifting the pencil. So just a basic star that you would draw when you doodle. And then using the four round brush, I painted that star in solid white. This is to get coverage because the star is going to be blue, but in order to get that blue to be nice and solid and bright, I painted the first layer of the star white.
Then I painted the star blue. So you can paint it solid blue, but I wanted it to look 3D. So what I did was I loaded the tip of the brush in the blue and I painted just the top half of each of the star points. So I painted each half going in a clockwise direction with this first layer of blue. So you can see how that gives it that 3D effect when you only paint half of the star. And then I went back and painted the second half with blue. Tried to make that blue a little bit darker by loading more blue on my brush because there was white on my brush the other time, so it was lighter. It gives it kind of a 3D effect. Next, I loosely outlined the center lines of the star. So with the titanium white, I outlined from the tip of each of the star points to the center. So tip to center, tip to center, that kind of brightens up that center, but also makes that star pop a little bit more. And then I grabbed some Mars Black and did some outlining on just on the bottom and the right, not the entire star, just bottom and right. Gives it a little bit of shadow on the bottom, but also helps me um, define that area. So that allowed that star to pop just a little bit more. I can do this part right as well. There we go. And this painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion. Lots of details in this painting, fun, patriotic, summer theme, birdhouse with a cute chickadee. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.